Hey guys, welcome back to the Adobe Live YouTube channel. My name is Jacob, or better known as By Jacob Paris. I'm a freelance designer and a content creator, and I've partnered with Adobe to teach you everything you need to know about turning your digital design into real tangible items with Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Fresco. In our last episode, we covered sketching in Adobe Fresco, as well as the process of character design. Today, we're taking that to the next level in Adobe Illustrator and vectorizing our sketches. So let's pop over to Illustrator and get this started. But most importantly, the first thing we need to do is import our sketch over into Adobe Illustrator. There's a lot of ways that you can do this. You can use the Adobe Cloud Library or you can email it to yourself. But since I'm running on a MacBook and I have an iPhone and an iPad, I'm just going to airdrop it to myself and just drag it over. So you'll notice that the sketch is a little more defined than in our initial sketch video. And that's because off camera, I did some refinement. The sketch process does take a lot of time and the refinement process takes even longer. I just want to save you guys some time in the last episode and give you a baseline on how to approach it, but take as long as you need in order to get your sketches to where you like. So now that we have our image in Illustrator, what's next? Well, first we need to find out the best way for us to vectorize this image. One of the ways that people are probably the most familiar with is just going to your image trace tool and clicking make it expand. And look at that, you have a vectored image. Obviously it's not very good and you can adjust it accordingly, but that's the easy way. The way I approach vectorizing my art is arguably a little more fun, it takes a little more time, but I enjoy it. So what you wanna do is click on your reference image and go over to your transparency panel. Drop the opacity down just to where you can kind of see it, but you can also draw over it without too many issues. Go into your layers panel and just lock that image just so you don't have to worry about clicking on your sketch. Really when I'm sketching in Adobe Illustrator, I only work with about two tools. That's the curvature tool and the scissors tool. The curvature tool is great for getting all these different shapes and designs. And most of your sketches and designs are going to be curved lines or basic shapes. You can also use all of these in tandem with the line tool, the rectangle tool, and the circle tool. You'll probably see me bouncing in between a lot of those, but for now, let's start with the curvature tool. Make sure you go down to your stroke panel and make that black. Make sure that your fill is turned off or transparent and bring up your stroke panel up in this corner over here. And let's make that size maybe, maybe we'll go to 15. Perfect. So now really all we need to do is zoom into our characters and start designing. When using the curvature tool, really all you need to do is click a point, click another point and keep clicking to get that nice curvature look and follow your sketch lines. Really, really simple. If you don't want to have these squared off caps, you can click on this rounded cap setting and it'll round it and make it look nice and smooth. This is pretty much all I do with the pen tool in order to get my characters fully vectorized, following the lines of my sketch and strategically clicking. For points like these, again, you're just going to be clicking on your line. And also, if it's not necessarily cooperating with you, click on your line and just drag it to either flatten it out or grab the handles of these anchor points. Another great tip that you can use is if you use the selection tool and click on your line that you just drew. If you go up to object, path, and smooth, you can actually smooth out your line as much as you want. In this case, we don't want it to be too rounded because this is supposed to be a square backpack strap. So we'll go about here and then just go back to our curvature. So we got to a point where we have a little circle shape here, his little thumb that we can obviously use the curvature tool if we wanted to, but it's gonna be much easier for this application using the circle tool. That's gonna be under the line segment option and make sure you click the ellipse tool. We'll make a little circle here. Of course, we don't want these lines bleeding over into his actual hand. So what we can do is click on the scissor tool or just press C and zoom in here at the line of that circle and just delete those using the delete button. Now we have a nice little thumb for a little character. Let's keep going.
Okay, now that we're basically done with the bottom half of the character, let's work on the head. Approaching the head is gonna be similar, but a little bit different. In this case, we're gonna be working with mostly shapes. So we'll go ahead and load up our ellipsis tool, kind of make the general shape of our sketch. We want our lines to line up with these lines down here. I'll just adjust it like this. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and cut the lines where the lines end so they're not clipping into our character and just delete this part. Now what we can do is we can use ellipsis tool and we can just trace the shape of this mushroom. These shapes are always a little difficult to get down the first try because we're going to be adjusting with all these anchor points and you can see it looks a little wonky. But with a combination of the direct selection tool and a little bit of patience as well as using the smooth tool, you should be pretty decent. And we'll just go over to the smooth tool. Perfect. I'm going to adjust this a little bit more so that this is the same on both sides. A lot of this vectorized drawing is just tweaking and pulling and pushing until you have your lines in the place that you This one, you can even go so far as to so back up. Sweet, perfect. I'm really liking where this is going. So now we wanna add the little nodule on top of his head. That again is gonna be really, really simple. We only have to actually draw these bubbles once. So really all we're gonna need to do is use the ellipse tool again. Go ahead and make that shape. We'll cut it just above the center and delete this part. We use the curvature tool, make a little curve here, connect those lines with, without that bottom. What we can do now is just click on both with the selection tool, the command G, group them together, the command C and command V, and just drag those into place. So we don't have to redraw them every single time. I like using this method just because objects are supposed to look the same. There's really no point in wasting my time and redrawing them over and over and over and over again. We'll go ahead and finish these lines as well as the eyes and face for this technique really if you have any shapes that are connected like this what i like to do is highlight them click k which brings up your live paint bucket tool in this case we do want our fill to be filled and we'll make that black and you can just click on whichever shape you want to be filled in obviously they have to be connected in some capacity and then it'll make that then we'll just go down to the white make that white so this is gonna be our eyes. This is how I like doing eyes. I know it's not how everyone does eyes, but this is my, kind of like my little moniker. Signature, however you wanna say it. All right, so now we really just need to remove the head shape inside of these nodules, work on the backpack and this hand and staff, and I think we'll be in a really good point for our first character. All right, I would say our first character is done to me. Something I also wanna mention when it comes to doing this vector art is you'll probably notice that while you're scaling things up and down, that you'll have one of two options of what's going on. Either A, you're scaling it down, it's scaling down proportionately and it looks really nice, or B, when you're scaling it down, it's kind of starting to thicken up and look like a little bit unreadable. Really, if you want to choose between those two options, 
the easiest way to do that, or really the only way to do that. You wanna to go to window and go down to your transform panel. Down here, you'll see scale corners and scale strokes and effects. I like this one the best because I am constantly scaling my objects up and down. So of course I want them to scale proportionately. If you see up in the stroke panel over here, it is blank. And that's because our little guy has some different size strokes. The easiest way to fix that is just by typing in a number. So I typed 15, what we initially started on. Now the entire character is a stroke point of 15. So if you look over here and if we scale down, you'll see that it's scaling proportionately you'll see those numbers change. So make sure, highlight your whole character, click Command G, make sure it's grouped up. And now you have your first vectorized character built out for this project. What I also like to do is I like to just go ahead and copy and Command V, make another copy of my character, drag him over into the gray space and just go to the layers panel and make it invisible. This is just so I have a little bit of a backup in case anything happens to this character. Might be me just being paranoid, but you know, you can also name these if you want. I don't because I am lazy, <laughs> but you know, that's a great way to keep up with it as well. So really, I think it's high time that we jump into these other two characters and get them fleshed out. Really, it's a lot of the same working in with the curvature tool, the circle tool or ellipse tool and the line tool as well as the scissors. Uh, and if we come across anything that I feel like is worth highlighting, I will definitely point that out. Really, I just want you to see this process from start to finish from someone that does this a lot. So let's hop into it. Here's a great point to highlight already. If you're working with your sketch and you're noticing that it seems a little funky or just like off, what you can do is you can unlock your sketch and just adjust it accordingly so it's to scale. I'm just gonna tip this up a little bit just because it's a little bit easier to work off of your baseline instead of kind of trying to adjust yourself. At least I find it easier, but if you wanna keep it as is, you can do that as well. There's really no right way. So one thing that I like to do to just keep some consistency across my designs is I like to reuse some assets from other characters in my adjacent characters. So in this case, I want these feet to look as consistent as possible. So instead of redrawing them and trying to get them as accurate as possible, I can just copy and paste them and adjust them accordingly. In this case, I think I'm gonna make them teensy bit wider, maybe like that, just so it fits for this big guy. Maybe that's a little too big. It's starting to look like clown shoes, but you kind of get the idea. I'm just gonna adjust these a little bit more, maybe bring them a little closer and take advantage of being able to reuse these assets because they're mine. So I can do what I want with them and you can too. So if you wanna redraw them, you can also do it that way. There really is no right or wrong way. I know I've said that a lot, but I really want to encourage that because I want you to feel free to express and design and do things however you feel is correct because it is correct. So yeah, let's get back into it.
All right. That's looking pretty good for character two for me. Uh, we're making some really good progress and really good time. I actually just realized that these eyes are a little off center. We'll just fix that real quick as I was talking. But yeah, we've already got two characters kind of like rounded out. Like I think they're looking really consistent. I like seeing this process of the characters kind of start to come to life because, you know, when you're sketching them, of course, they look sketchy. So it tends to kind of make you feel like, ah, you know, I don't know where this is going to go. But, you know, this is this is turning out exactly how I'd like. And I'm really, really liking these characters. I think they're really cute. So we've got one more and yeah, we'll be done. Super exciting. All right, and that looks like our final character is done to me. I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. I think looking at them side by side, I probably want to size these just a tad bit different, like maybe make this one a little bit smaller. And when you're designing, obviously you can make these adjustments on the fly. It's really up to whatever your preference is. I really like how this looks. And another thing too, if you start noticing that your characters are looking a little like chunky, you can also just drop the stroke of all of your characters. I'm going to go down to 13 because I think 15 is a little too thick for this guy. Perfect. Yeah, I really, 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 really like this. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I hope that if you're following along that this kind of gave you some insight on how to vectorize your sketches and get some really cool looking characters because because I think we're at a great stopping point and fully prepared for next week's episode. I really hope you enjoyed this video today, guys. This was a lot of fun and I hope if you're following along that you got to learn some new tricks in Illustrator with vectorizing your sketches as well as using these tools to build out your characters and I hope you had fun watching my process as well. Next episode, we're building colors studies and font libraries. It's going to be a ton of fun and we're really going to get to see these characters come to life even more than they already have. Hope you have a great week and see you next episode. Bye guys.